Hello, my name is Susan Williams, and you are going to learn how to set up pipe and drape from these lovely gentlemen. We've got Carl and Craig, and they are going to teach you how to set this up while maintaining social distance and wearing appropriate equipment. Uh, I will be your voiceover person so that I will uh, you know, be able to narrate for them and explain what's going on because they're going to be busy working. So let's do it. So our lovely stagehands are going to start building the base for the pipe and drape. Uh, these base plates weigh, I don't know, it's about 35 to 40 pounds, 20 pounds. Uh, they are pretty heavy, so this is what keeps our pipe and drape uh, standing upright and safe. You'll see that they have two different holes here and you can use either one to set up your drape. It just kind of depends on if you want it to be um, closer to the edge or not. Now there is a right way and a wrong way to set these up. If you notice, the screw here will fit in on only one side. So if you look here, you can see it's kind of sticking out a little bit. So that's not gonna be good for any kind of stage floor. So we wanna pull that out and set it in the correct side where there's this nice little inset bit. There we go, now it's flush and safe for floors. So once he's got that set, he'll grab the other part of our pin and screw set up here and just screw that in. You can hand tighten it. Some people like to use a screwdriver. I usually just hand tighten it. is done. It's important while you are doing this to not lay these flat on the ground <laughs> without any kind of support because these are very difficult to pick back up, um, especially if you are lacking in the fingernail department. So now they are going to decide how far away they want their pipe and drape. Um, usually we try to keep it several feet apart. Uh, there's a minimum amount that the pole, and you can see our silver pole here in the background, there's a minimum distance that it can go. They've decided for this one set, um, it looks like they're about eight to 10 feet. I think I would say 10 feet apart. What do you guys think? 10 foot? All right, so they're about 10 feet apart there. So now they will take their do you want to measure it? They're going to take the uprights. Now these uprights slide onto your peg there, just like that. And then the pole is up. They're going to measure it, make sure that it's going to fit before loading it with the pipe and drape. So that looks good, that will fit. All right, so now, they have their drapes and you may notice here as he is grabbing them, one side of the drape has a completely different texture than the other side. And it's hard to, um, to tell, I think, without feeling it, but one side is shiny, so this is the shiny side. And then the other side is more matte. And what that means is the matte side is going to um, absorb a lot of light, whereas the shiny side will reflect it. So the matte side is your front facing part of the drape. So we want the front facing part uh, towards whatever your audience is going to be. Now these are very simple to put in. Um, they have a uh, sewn part on the top, this hemmed area where you just drag it onto the pipe. Uh, very similar to you know, your curtains in your house uh, maybe a shower curtain or something like that. So it's super easy to put these on. You do want to make sure as you are loading this with different drapes is that they're all going the same direction. If you get one backwards, you have to pull the whole thing down uh, and then start over. And you can definitely tell when one is wrong. So you want to double check that each of these is correct. Our system is designed to have four panels for every horizontal piece. If you add more panels, uh, you can overload the horizontal. 
Um, you can also do more work than you need to, really. So we typically try to keep it about four per each horizontal. That way we can have the full setup of pipe and drape. So Carl over here is holding it up to keep it neat and easy for Craig to float on the other side. Um, there's a few different methods of doing this. Some people like to throw uh, them up and over so it kind of like overhangs. And I do that with film shoots when it's a quick thing. But when we're talking live events, uh, we like to make sure we thread them through so they're safe. All right, so now they have their four panels. And they will take the edges here and load them into the vertical poles. So Carl is now pulling the edge of the drape up over the pole to just kind of mask it. Um, this is definitely an optional feature, but this is something that we like to see because it covers the pole and just looks a lot nicer. It, it looks kind of weird. Um, if you just leave that sticking up and then you have all the drape in between, it's just kind of a weird choice. So we pull it up and over so that it, it just gives it that extra bit of niceness. The whole point of pipe and drape is to look good. So if it doesn't look good, uh, it's not doing its job. Now at the bottom, they're fluffing out the panels. And you can see that he's pulling the excess drape back behind so that it's not just uh, chilling at the bottom. It's nice and even and uh, easy for when we have to lift this up. So we're trying to put as much, uh, you know, ease factor into this as possible. Uh, we don't want too much resistance when we go to raise this whole sucker. Um, so they're just prepping it out to make it a little bit easier. Now you don't want to make it look perfect yet because we still have to move the drape. But if you get it close now, it just saves you more steps later. All right, so Craig has grabbed some clips here. Um, let's get a shot of your clips, Craig. All right, so here we have some clothespins. Uh, we call them in the business C47s, and there's a lot of um, stories as to why we call them that. But the basic idea is that we're taking these clips. It could be binder clips or clothespins. And we are using these uh, to secure the back of the drape. You can see here uh, there's, some, there's some holes in between. I can see light coming through the other side. And that's not great when we're trying to use this to cover an entrance or to keep something private from the public view. So they're going behind and clipping the back side of the drape uh, to kind of keep those holes less obvious. Um, please note that you would not want to do this if someone has to walk through the drape. So if they are coming through, like Craig is demonstrating, uh, you don't want to put clips there, obviously, because that would make them struggle and although that's a fun joke. It's not exactly great for your job. So they are clipping the backside just to keep any of those uh, corners or edges nice and clean. So we're going to raise this up. Um, you can actually see some of our pipe and drape that we've already set behind us is a lot taller. So let me zoom in here. Now on the edge of the pole, so here is our uh, vertical pole. There is a mechanism in the pole. When you push the pole up, it automatically locks in place. So you don't have to do anything else. You can just push it right up. Now the ring there on the, on the pole in the center, if we push that ring up, it allows us to lower the pole. So now it's mobile. Um, but if the ring is in its down position, then it just lets us push it up and it's nice and safe. Beautiful. So now they've got it up uh, pretty enormously high, I will say. So <laughs> they'll take the bottom and adjust it so that it looks pretty. Uh, these panels are quite large. These are 16 by 5 foot panels, so they can cover a good amount of uh, space here. Um, Carl is just taking a moment to even them out so that they look nice. Any other spots that they might need to adjust because um, you know, they have a gap or something, they'll adjust that before finishing up. I do recommend when you are finished with your pipe and drape, you take as many steps back as you can. So walk as far away as, as you can from your drape to make sure that it looks good, not only up close because you're right there with it, but it also looks good from far away. And then you can tell if there's any areas that need to be um, 
you know, fluffed or adjusted. Because we don't want smooth panels. Smooth panels don't look good. We want that nice fullness of each panel as we are setting this up. Well, normally we would leave this up for quite a while, but the good news is today we're taking it right back down. <laughs> so to take down our pipe and drape, we are going to lift the mechanism on the center part of our uprights, and that will loosen and allow the drape to come down. As it's coming down, our stagehands are maintaining not only eye contact, but also verbal if necessary, to make sure that they're coming down evenly. Because if we drop one side of our pipe and drape, that can injure somebody, it can damage the pipes. Um, we just wanna keep it nice and even as we lower it so that everyone knows what's going on. Now, to take this off, you simply raise the top section and drop it. But first, yes, they are going to remove the pins. If we leave those pins on, it's gonna be very annoying later. So they're going to take the pins off, all of our nice little clothespins or C47s. Now they can drop the drapes. Their method is the same as mine. Just dump them off and then get the poles out of the way. And then we pretty much wait to fold them last. Um, drapes are disproportionately expensive. Like they cost so much more money than, than you might expect for this kind of fabric. Uh, so we do our best to keep them as neat as possible, which is why folding and putting them away correctly um, is a huge part of this. So. We are indoors, so we don't have to worry too much about our you know, grass or dirt getting in here, but I would take them to a nice location before putting them away, just to make sure they can dry out, get any bits off, et cetera. So they're taking the pins off of our base plates here, just by unscrewing it. You can just unscrew it by hand, and then taking the pin and instantly putting it back in for the, the screw and the pin, because if you, if you lose one bit of that, it's gonna be a bad time for us to try to get a replacement. So we put that right back and then safely take our base plates. Thank you, Carl. All right, so this is the tricky part, is folding the drape. Now, this is usually the last thing we do when we're done for the day. So we wanna make sure we do it right, uh, but also efficiently. So here, we want to have the show side or the fuzzy side uh, on the inside so that when we fold our drape, um, that is maintaining, since that is the part that the audience sees, that is maintaining its integrity. You can see this white label here. We want that on the bottom. So that has all of the information about the drape. It's, its size, its thickness, uh, the color, if it's different colors. Uh, so we wanna keep that on the bottom so when we pull it out of the box, it's easy to read. So they're folding it in half twice. They're doing two, what I would call a hot dog two hot dogs, and then Carl here is going to do his folds while Craig vacates to maintain our distance. And that would be three hamburgers. And here we've got our label out so we can see exactly which piece of drape that is. <laughs> 